sponsored by Dower Infinity. Welcome to Thinking Tackle. This time we're at St John's Pool on the Linear Complex in Oxford, one of seven day ticket lakes. Oh, steady fishy. There's seven day ticket lakes in this area, three syndicate lakes as well, and it has to be the best day ticket complex in the country for the numbers of big fish. This, as you can see, is a stunning 26 pounder that I had last night. I'm here with Ian McMillan, AKA Ting Tong, He's fishing in the swim next door. And during the show, we're gonna cover all the things that we do on these tricky waters. There's probably 25 to 30 people here at the moment fishing three rods each. And the fish get this every single day of the week, 12 months a year. It's ridiculously busy. The fish are ridiculously cute. And we're gonna show you all the ways that we catch them. Look at that, what a beauty. We're going to talk bait now, so uh, you show me yours, Mr. Tong, and I'll show you mine. <laughs> what you got in the bucket? Best offer I've had all day, anyway, that wasn't <laughs> it. Uh, right, chilli hemp. Right. Sprinkling of corn, not too much corn. Why not too much corn? I just want a bit of visual. I don't want to overdo it on the corn. Right. Uh, okay. I, know, I know some people like a lot of corn, like some of the Alstow boys use a lot of corn, don't they? Mm. But just a sprinkling for me. Right, OK. Uh, I've got some 10 mil cell, right. which are air dry to eight. As you well. lucky boy. Golden child, thanks. <laughs> Not even you can get them. Not even I can get them, mate. That's, that's these fellas here, isn't yep. it? I have got some 10 mils with me, actually. And I'm using the cell as well, right? Which, are, which is a coincidence. We didn't talk, did we, before we come wow. over here? Um, so why are you using the cell? Uh, um, well, it's not a new bait. I've, I've, I've not one for jumping on new, the latest bait or the one that's under test. Yep. Uh, I've had a few discussions with Kev about that, but... Um, I just feel it's right to change. I was using the Pulse last year on Frimley yep. because it had gone into the lake. Right. Uh, and I'm using this because I think a lot of that's gone into the manor as well. You know, I've just got my ticket for the manor, so right. that's the only reason I'm on the cell. So you're using something that everybody else has already been putting yeah. in? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, and you've got, you got eight millers or 10 millers dried down. Yeah, yeah. A few bigger ones in there I've got as a well. few bigger ones uh, that have been zapped to the crusher. Uh, I've got a bit of special G ground break just to stodge it up. Right. And I've got two tins of tuna in sunflower oil. Right, now that's another thing, right? I always use tuna um, in brine. Mm. And I noticed, you know, we've been to Maison a lot, you've done really well at Maison, and you always said, oh, I'll put loads of tuna in my mix, but you never told me that it was in sunflower oil. Yeah, but now, you never <laughs> asked. <laughs> so is, is there something to it, though? It's just personal confidence. I right. like a really oily, stinky, fishy mix. Right, so when you, when you spot it out there... You it flattens big, the lake. It flattens the lake. It will flatten the lake. You get a big slick on yeah. the top. Yeah, yeah. Then... Summer and winter? Um, I don't use so much of it in the, in the winter. Right. Uh, well, certainly not in sunflower oil. I'll perhaps use a bit in brine, but I, don't, I haven't been spoiling that much in the winter. Again, friendly boilies and hemp. Right. So I've not been using it, but I wouldn't use it in sunflower oil in the winter. I'd, I'd right. perhaps go to the because brine. Because it congeals a bit too. Yeah, yeah. And, and, right. and there's a big, uh, the big debate about too much fish meal in the, in the winter is not really good for, good for the, the lake or good for the fish. Sure. So, uh, sure. so how much of that do you put out? when you, you know, cause that's a, 
I've had loads of people already coming into the back of me swim. I never fish on these kind of places that mm. are open to everybody. Dan, can you give a bit of advice about this? What about that? You know, people yeah. want to know. Yeah. And one of the biggest questions is how much do you put in when you first start? Because I've moved my spots, or I've moved my spot because you're kind of in the lead and I need to <laughs> rake it back and I'm in the flyer. Yeah, well, um, you put yourself in the best way. Well, I put myself under a bit of pressure, yeah. and you're not doing it any any good, are you? Because you keep rubbing <laughs> my nose in it. So what I've done, I've moved them long, two rods long, two rods on the same spot, probably yeah. two foot apart, and I've put 20 spots on that. Right. But normally, last night on the short spot, I put 12. I put 12. If I get a fish, I put six, just because it's easy to remember. Right. Okay. 12 which is to not, start. Which is not a lot, is it? You know, it's really. not a lot, but there's still a lot of small particles, isn't it? Yeah. Hemp, um, eight millers, tuna. Bits Loads of, of bits for them yeah, to pick. Yeah, yeah. Out and I think there's a fine line between putting too much in yep. and then you make it harder for yourself to get a bite because once you're getting preoccupied on the little stuff, yep. it's harder for them to single the update out, in my opinion. Yeah, right. Okay, um, so you're putting in just enough bait to get a bite and then. Or, or a couple of bites. Right. So, uh, would you, after your first fish, yeah. would you re spod? Yeah, I'd spod six, yeah. Six right. spots. Any time of the day or night, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, well, everything's clipped up, so you can right. you can spod in the dark. You, you've, you've got your horizon markers. Yeah. So, you, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get one, your rig straight back out, and two, uh, a bit more attraction, a bit more food back in the swim. Right. So, uh, uh, when would you say you would put more bait in if you hadn't had a bite? Because that's another big thing. Mm. People say to me, I ain't got a clue when to put more in. I've put me, me t 10 or 15 or 20 spodfuls in. When do you put the next lot in if nothing's happened? Well, well because of the oil, certainly because of the sunflower oil and the hemp oil, if you're, or if you're using pellet, yep. if something disturbs it, you get the slick. Right, so before you go any further, what is a slick? Uh, a slick is oil, basically from the tuna, pellet, hemp. It's all congealed. Yep. Bits get trapped under the gravel, in the silt. When a fish, any fish, could it be bream, tench, pike, but obviously carp is what we're after. If they move over the spot or they feed on it, it creates, the oil disperses, comes up to the surface, and it creates a flat spot or as, as slick as we, and we as, know it as, as the wind slick. pushes it away, yeah. we, and we it's, say it's, just it's, a slick. it's just a, visu a visual feature. Right, so you, you know they're see. feeding on your boat, yeah. so when, when do you then decide, I need to put more in if you haven't had a bite? Well, one, um, if the fish are showing, Right. And you ain't had a bite right. and you're getting a slick. When that slick has stopped, you know they've cleaned you out. They've eaten it all. So you really need to get some more bait out. Right. That, okay. that, that is what I would do. You, you watch for the slick. Once it's stopped, you know you've been, well, one done, which we always get yeah. done. Um, and then two, you have to just give them a bit more grub to try and pull them back onto your spot. Right. Right. Okay, cool. I mean, I'm the same. If, it, if I feel I should have caught one and there's fish showing in the area, mm. but, but I haven't had a bite, just a couple more spots out there. Yeah. You see people get it wrong on these places. They haven't had a bite, so they put 30 spots yeah, they back fill out. It in, yeah. And it yeah. just ruins Killed that feeding it. spell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's it's all about thinking what's going on on the bottom of the lake. Right, I should have had a bite, couple of spot falls out, draw them back in, yeah. and hopefully snare yeah. one. I mean a lot a lot of people on these sort of waters will kill it before they start. Yeah. They think that you know the lakes have, they can be prolific at times. Uh, you know, one nil isn't really a true reflection of <laughs> what the annihilation will end up like at the end of the show, Mr. Fairbanks. All right, we'll see, we'll see, we'll um, see. Right then, Dan, I mean, yours is not that dissimilar to mine, is it? So, what have you got in there? <coughs> Loads of little bits of loveliness, mate. <laughs> Munga, as we call it. So, <laughs> chilli hemp, mate, exactly the same as you. Fish absolutely love it. And I've got party mix in there as well, which has got some hemp in it, bit aniseedy. Um, it's got little tiny maple peas, bits of maize and stuff in there mm. as well, which I could use as a hook bait, yeah, very yeah, good hook yeah, bait yeah, on yeah, here, and it caught yeah. loads of fish on maize on this place. Um, the cell, basically, because um, I want to use a bait on these shows that everybody else can use. Yeah. I am using new stuff from Mainline. They have got me to use the bait that's going to be out next year in my own fishing, mm. but you know I've got great confidence in this, yeah. so I've used it. Any a mixture, of them to be fair. yeah, absolutely. Um, a mixture of ten millers. Um, and just chopped up ones. I, I chop them up in a food processor at home to start off with. Mm. And if I run out during the session, I use the old crusher to, just to crush them up. Yeah. Um, not a lot of corn, same as you. Same, yeah. I don't like it too bright on the bottom. And probably the only thing I do differently is I do season it up a bit. So I put a little bit of chili powder in, a little bit of salt in the whole mix, slosh it round. One key thing actually, I knock it up, I don't know about you, but I knock my first lot up before I leave home and, the same, yeah. and let all, all the goodness soak in, soak in yes. I, into yeah. the boilies yeah. and everything else. Yeah. And I think that that just, it, it comes alive, doesn't it? Yeah. The mix then. You well, know. you can see your, your first spot, it just it flattens the lake completely, yeah. doesn't it? Just one spot, it can just flatten the whole area with the, yeah. with the oil that's yeah. all gone and into it the ground. It just looks so carpy, yeah. what fish could resist that? If you put that in the right spot, 
we yeah. should be having them. Yeah, it, they tried yeah. and tested, aren't they? Absolutely. We would take these anywhere in the world Absolutely. and be confident of catching fish. Well, it's worked for me on this session, to be fair, mate. Uh, not for you at the moment, but, you know, it's early days, isn't it? Well, you know, it doesn't very often I am stuck for words. But, uh, <laughs> I'm not... I'm not the ca- tongue, I'm, speechless. I'm oh not comment. <laughs> Right, we're here. just coming into the evening now on the first day and I'm under a bit of severe pressure from Mr Fairbrass here. He's sneaked one from the lesser fancied swim, shall I say, so uh, I've had to change everything round. Um, we've been working at zigs all day and not really happened. We've been playing around with adjustables and different sort of depths. Uh, I've moved my spot a bit longer because, uh, because Dan had his fish probably about 85, 90 yards, so um, he's cut me off, so I've got to fight back. Well, it's much later on, on the first day. As you can see, the weather's changed dramatically. It's looking really good for a bite on the bottom. I did fish zigs for probably three or four hours today um, with no results at all. I fished tiny little black hook baits. That's the one on here at the moment, but it just didn't work. So I kept the rods out of the swim for probably two or three hours, gave the fish a chance to come in over the baited area. I re-spotted during the day at different intervals, again, to try and entice the fish in. And now Tong's seen fish at the back of the area. So I've put one spot full out, and I've got the other rods both out first time. I'm try and get this one out first time as well um, and try and snare a fish before it gets dark because last light on this lake is a brilliant time to get a bite. Well it is now 10 to 3 in the morning, um, I had a bite about half past one, um, quite a dogged fight, if I'd lost it I would have said it was a big one um, but it worked out to 22 and a half pound, really nice mirror um, and it's weird how all the bites seem to come at once because I'm sure the bloke across the way there um, has had action because he was recasting um, as I was playing my fish and just as I got my fish in the net Tongy had a bite had that absolutely ripping off um, and uh, I shouted over to him so he knew I was up um, and uh, unfortunately that one's come off so uh, it's uh, still 2-1 to me because he had one just before it got dark last night um, but I'm sure there'll be more bites but it's uncanny how all the bites happen at the same time and uh, when you're up in the middle of the night it's nice because it's definitely quiet you can hear the fish jumping and what have you and that's what carp fishing is all about in my opinion just being out there doing it so we'll see you in the morning and uh, we'll show you the 22 pounder <laughs>